Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Man TGS Euro 6. And with this mod, there are a tremendous number of options available to us. So many, in fact, it's easier to take a look at the individual parts than every single configuration because a lot of them are very similar with very minor changes. For example, these two are almost the same. The difference is the suspension, gearing, and the paint on the front bumper. And there are quite a few configurations that are like that where they're very similar but with minor changes. So we're starting off with the box truck because I can't think of anything more manly than a man truck holding a man box on it. And this is one of the more basic configurations of the truck. And if you know nothing about trucks, man is a real manufacturer of trucks and this is based on a real life truck. So there is the outside. We can go ahead and take a look at the inside. And with the inside, we got a lot of details in here, all kinds of buttons and knobs. You can only imagine what they do, or if you actually have one of these trucks, you probably know what most of them would do. As for interior functionality, we have a working steering wheel and working gauges. However, the pedals down below do not move. If we turn on the lights, the gauges do light up, and then we have a little light as well for the headlights and the high beams. If we turn on the blinkers, we have a little light inside for that. And we got to make sure we don't crash because I'm so distracted looking at the inside of the truck that I'm not paying any attention to the outside. I do like how you can see the visor from inside of the truck. It's just kind of nifty to be able to see that. And then speaking of looking at the inside, on some of them we will have a section behind us. This one is just a day cab though, so there is nothing back there. We just have a passenger seat to our right. Also, we got more buttons up here. There are buttons everywhere in trucks. I love the buttons in trucks. Let's go ahead and go to the outside camera once again. And before we're done talking about interiors, I should show you the inside of the box. That's what it looks like. So yeah, the box is completely empty. So right now, the truck is able to drive really easily up this pretty steep hill. If we actually had some weight in it, it would be a little bit more difficult. But if we actually had some weight in it, we could also get a more powerful version of the truck. Anyways, this is, like I said, the most basic version of the truck. And it's already time to move on to a more complex version. So this one, just chuck it off a cliff. That's fine. That's what they're made for. Or maybe they're made for transporting goods. I always get those two mixed up. The water's really murky though, so we can't see nothing. So let's just go ahead and reset this. And we're going to go from something nice and simple to something really insane. This is the 8x8 off-road dumper. It has 12 wheels and every single wheel can put down power. And yes, there is actually 12. I know you only see what would be eight. If you look from below, you can see the back two sets are doubled up. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 wheels. Absurd. Now with this thing, we gotta have some rocks in it, right? So I'm gonna just load up a ton of rocks into this thing. And once they're loaded up, we'll be going for a drive. And I should probably show you at least one time how I'm loading this up. So we go to the rocks and boulders. Now we're getting the rock stack because it has a bunch of rocks all in one. They're going to fall over. That doesn't matter. We get the camera. We put somewhere above the truck and then we hit F7 to place them inside. And once you have one placed, you can just hit clone current and repeat over and over until you have a truck full of rock. Okay, so I think we have 20 sets of rocks in the trailer and each set of rocks weighs 4,000 pounds. So in total, there are 80,000 pounds of rocks in this thing. And it's an 8x8. We're going to use those off-road capabilities. And to really make use of them, we got to lock every single differential there is and turn on every single transfer case. Yes, there are four differentials to lock and three transfer cases to turn on. And one thing that's really cool about the 8x8 is both of the front sets of wheels churn. It's not just the very front wheel, it's that one and the one in the middle. Really, really cool. And thankfully, to get to an off-road area, it is not very far. In fact, we could be in the dirt in about five more seconds. And this isn't the hardest of off-road areas right here. This is just a dirt road. You could do this in a T-Series probably. It wouldn't be easy, but you could. With this, this is easy. This is a cakewalk. I might as well be driving on the paved road. It's so easy. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated. This is a very, very steep hill. And I am flooring it, trying my very best to keep traction and get up it. And it is a little bit of a struggle. There is no way a T-Series could do this with all of this weight. But it is going to make it, it looks like. We are losing speed. But we're gaining some. 
We're about stable at three to four miles per hour. This is the slowest thing I have ever done that is this dramatic and stressful, but it's making it. It's steadily accelerating all the way up to six miles per hour. It doesn't sound like much, but it climbed that very, very steep hill without any issue at all. Yeah, it slowed down a lot. That's to be expected. But I didn't have to do any sort of finagling with anything. We just drove through it with my maximum all-wheel drive capability set up, and we were through. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. I know it was kind of boring to watch, but the capabilities of this vehicle are amazing. But we haven't had any really nice crashes yet. Really nice crash coming at about 50 miles per hour into the tunnel in, let's just say five seconds again, because five seconds usually works out as a good rough estimate. So it's more like 45 miles per hour, unfortunately, but it should still be a really nice crash. Make sure we have a really good camera angle to look at this crash. Yeah, right about there should be good. And then 16 times slow-mo, there is the crash. And all of the rocks in the trailer are just gonna make a mess on the road. Again, that is 80,000 pounds of rocks. That is a ridiculous amount of weight. And it doesn't even look like that much, but that's what the stats say. It says this stack of rocks is 4,000 pounds. And I have no reason to doubt the game is lying to me. And somehow it still drives. I don't know how it still drives. And it drives right over the rocks. This thing is just insane how good it can off-road. Even after a 45 mile per hour collision with tons of weight in the back, it drives fine. We just can't see anything because of the smoke screen. So I'm resetting everything and you can see the trailer isn't actually aligned with the rocks. And look at how easy it could just go over like a hundred rocks. That was nothing to this guy. But I want to reload him up, so we're going to put him right where the rocks were. And then we're going to reset everybody again. And that should load up the rocks pretty good, except... Yeah, the side opened up. That's not supposed to happen, but I do have an idea on how we could work around this. If we make the gravity lower while we load up the rocks, it should make it where it doesn't cause as much damage to the truck. Perfect! So now, there are two ways you can unload the rocks I wanted to show you. Number one is this crazy way that opens up the sides, which won't completely unload everything for you. In fact, most of the rocks are still gonna stay inside of the truck. So then you also have the alternative, which is just the regular dumping style. Now, obviously you probably wouldn't use both at the same time because it just makes a mess. But if you want to, you could. You could totally do that. And a lot of the rocks are stuck to the side. That's a little strange, but that tiny bit of weight from the rocks is not gonna slow me down. We're gonna have another nice big collision, but this time, and the trailer is going to be opened up and pointed upwards. So we're going to see what that looks like in the middle of a collision. About 35 to 40 miles per hour right into this building. 16 times slow-mo once again. And that is a nice collision. Ooh, rear drive shaft is broken. That's not good. And look at this. The trailer actually kind of went down from the collision. That's nice. You can see it's actually touching the ground right in the middle, and that's what's holding it up. Uh, now it's sitting back on the truck, and the truck looks a little bit like a caterpillar, the way it's like bent up, or maybe like a banana. Whatever you want to say about it, it has a funny shape to it, but I want to really test the off-road capabilities of this thing. So we're going to head over to a map I like for doing off-roading stuff called Puff Truck Map, and to test the off-roading, we can get a new version that we have yet to use. This is going to be the 8x8 off-road cement mixer. Now, the cement mixer itself is not much heavier than the dumper. In fact, I actually think it's lighter than the dumper because there's no cement in it. Anyways, we're starting off without locking any of the differentials, without turning on any of the transfer cases. Just going through this dirt area here is something that would probably get a T-Series with the cement mixer stuck. We are plowing through this. This thing has... No fears. Bouncing all over the place, flooring it nonstop, going 20-ish miles per hour through this thing, and it did amazing. Not a hint of damage to it. So now, we gotta make things a little bit tougher. Well, I shouldn't sugarcoat this. It's quite a bit tougher. This next section is difficult to drive through with any stock vehicle. 
if you have something like the crawler version of the hopper, it's not too bad, but even then it can be a little bit difficult. So here we go. Differential still not locked. Other transfer cases still not turned on. And we are doing pretty well, although we are finally getting held up a little bit. So we're going to turn on all the differentials, lock all the transfer cases, and we are back in action. And I absolutely love the fact that I'm not looking at all where I'm going. I'm just flooring it and trying to keep it in a straight line. I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to go over the smoother part of the bump or anything like that. We just bounce around, going all over the place, and continue trucking along like it's a regular road. It doesn't even know that it's off-roading. It's so strong. Oh, well, maybe a little bit here. Okay, we just got a little bit crooked, so we're going to straighten ourselves back up so we can get some traction going, and that's it. That's all we needed to do to continue going. This thing is basically unstoppable at off-roading. It doesn't look like it would be this good. But having an 8x8 configuration with 12 wheels, that's absurd. Uh oh although we have just lost one of the front drive shafts we should have another one left actually but uh it looks like yeah we actually lost two of the front ones i don't know when we lost the other one so we only have just the rear two sets which isn't quite enough it's so long we kind of need those front drive shafts to help us along i think that's the problem so if you're doing serious off-roading you need to have that eight by eight because it is an absolute monster i cannot believe it made this i was pretty sure it would get stuck or it'd be a real struggle there was no struggle there was a oops i was driving crooked let me correct it oops i broke the front drive shaft because i'm driving stupid fast and reckless and otherwise it was easy because we are through this thing is such an off-roading beast my goodness all right now let's let's do some not so off-roady stuff at utah usa and for Utah USA, we're going to be taking a look at another off-road version. This one is the 4x4 off-road fertilizer tank agro truck. And this is just kind of cool because it has this little fertilizer tank on it so you can use it in farming applications. Also, here's a fun little fact. The original model for this mod is from Farming Simulator. Anyways, this thing does have a 4x4 configuration, so we're going to do 4x4 configuration things like driving straight through the dirt and rolling over a little bit. Yes. Rolling over is something 4x4s do. Don't question me. We're going to land on our wheels, see? And we can keep on going, except the rear, rear left axle has broken. But if we go ahead and turn that front transfer case on and lock the differentials, we can keep on driving with just three wheels, no problem. Speaking of wheels, I should tell you all the different configurations you can get. So there's the 4x2, which means it has four sets of wheels, and two of those wheels are driven. And then you can have a 4x4, a 6x4, a 6x6, an 8x4, and an 8x8. So there are a ton of different combinations that you could have. And I bet if you wanted to, you could even make weird things like a 8x2 configuration if you wanted to. But right now, I see a nice little rock to roll into. Yes, that was perfect. Nice damage on the cab. Can't really see it though until we get it back onto its wheels. And there's a look at the damage. That thing's heavy to lift up. And then we'll go ahead and reset it. And now we're going to take a look at the crane attachment. And I want something that has a crane and a dump bed so we can use both at the same time. So we're going to get the 8x8 dumper with crane attachment, which isn't an off-road machine. You can see it doesn't even have that much ground clearance. And speaking of ground clearance, every one of these guys has the ability to modify the ride height a little bit. So you can see if I hit G, it raises up the trailer some. And then I can go ahead and hit Control G to lower the trailer some. So it's just a little bit extra tweaking you can have if you need to raise or lower the vehicle. Now with this crane, we need something to actually mess around with. We're going to start by just crushing a regular vehicle. So let's just get a boring old Abishu Pessima and we're going to crush it with the crane. It's actually perfectly placed. We need to do nothing else. So the crane has all the controls listed here, and they are not the easiest things to really remember. So if you want to learn the controls, it will take you a while. I'm not going to say the specific controls out loud because I'm going to need to focus on actually hitting the buttons to do what I want to do. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and stabilize the truck so it won't tip over as I mess around with the crane. So we pull these things out as far as they can possibly go. 
And then we're going to unfold the legs. So the legs go down. And then we need to extend the legs, which will make it nice and stable, in theory. Next, we need to open up the crane so we can do that. We're going to do it in two stages. So you have just the movement I'm doing here. And then you also have this movement as well to fully open the crane. And is it going to clear it? Ooh, no, it's not. Yes, you can kind of wreck your own vehicle with the crane, so be careful. So there we go. The crane is now opened up. Next, we are going to extend the crane. And now we wait for the crush. Perfect. Yes. This is how you crush a vehicle with a crane. And you do notice the crane is lifting up. Well, I should say the truck is lifting up even with the supports because it's putting all of its strength into crushing this car. And it's still crushing it more, but it's still lifting the truck more as well. This thing looks like it wants to flip over at any moment, but it can't because it must crush. It must crush. Uh, that is awesome. So now, let's see, can we lift the car up? Sometimes the crane gets stuck inside the cars when you crush them, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if it did. We are now kind of level, so the car should start to try to lift up any moment now. Will it lift? Unfortunately, no. It was close. It almost did, but it couldn't. The good news is, is there are things that we can lift. So let's go ahead and get one. There are these special crates. They're specifically designed to work with the crane. And now we just need to attach the crane to the crate. And actually what I need to do is wait for the crane to stop wiggling all over the place because I have no idea where it's going to end up. Okay, the crane is stabilized and I lined it up with the box. So to attach the box, we go to couplers and then just hit attach all and it will attach to it. And we can go ahead and lift the box up. And here's a fun fact for you. We really do need these additional pieces holding the truck up because if those aren't there, we would tip over right now. It's not even that high in the air. But if we go ahead and reduce the height of that, in fact, just flip them up all the way and then raise the crane more and more, it just tips my truck over. It doesn't actually raise it, it tips it over because the center of gravity is so far out there, man. It can't do nothing. So to fix that, we can go ahead and flip the stabilizers back up, right? There you go. Pull yourself up. And then we go ahead and extend them. And now that it's stable, it can actually put it way, way into the air. You can see just how high this thing can get. And it's not even at max height, I don't think yet. Like, I am extending this thing as far as it can possibly go up into the air just to see what its limits are. And it's still raising it. In fact, I got to adjust the camera. By the way, it's like a two-hand job to adjust this thing properly, hitting every single button you need to do. And I'm hitting the wrong button sometimes. There we go. Okay. So I think at this point it is fully extended and it's just in the sky. There's just a crate in the sky now. Let's see, if we uh, do this, it's gonna tip over. Oh no, stop it, stop it. Untip, untip, please untip. Oh my goodness, it worked. Okay, here is the dumbest idea yet. We're gonna try to load it into the trailer from that height. I think it's gonna miss the trailer by quite a bit but I'm trying so I'm currently rotating the crate so it'll be above the trailer it's kind of hard to see because it's a little slow but if you stare right here you can clearly see the rotation as it happens very slowly it rotates I think it's still rotating isn't it or did it break no it's rotating it's going it's going give it time give it time okay so let's see how's that look yeah, we can rotate it a bit more is definitely going to overshoot the back of the truck. So to have a little bit of fun with it, we'll try to put a car under the crate and the crate will hopefully smash a car. That is uh, pretty much right behind him. Like I don't need to do right behind him since I'm like almost certain it's going to miss. But just in case it actually makes it, we'll have it there. So to crush a car, we'll just grab a little pickle out here. Kind of a small target, so hopefully I'm accurate here. And somehow, when I was hitting all those buttons, I started a replay. I don't know what I'm doing, man. So we'll put the pickle, like, right here. Does it look like it's right under it? That looked pretty close. And then we go back to the truck. We go to the couplers. And then we detach all. Then we gotta swap over to the pickle and freeze physics before the crate makes it all the way down. Try to get a nice camera angle for this. Eight times slow-mo, unfreeze physics. 
and the crate should be coming down from the sky at any moment. I see the shadow, there is the crate, and it was perfectly placed. Completely crushed in the roof of the pickle, and now it's even kind of flying in the air a little bit. Oh, what is this? It's staying like that. How in the world has this happened? <laughs> that looks wacky. But that's how it's going to stand. Okay. Well, we are now done with the pickle. So we're going to go back to the man. And we are going to do something dumb. We're going to take the man and we're going to try to drive it through a tunnel. Which obviously is not going to work because we have a crane going about a quarter mile into the air. Probably not that long, but it seems like it. it's such a tall crane. And we're going to see what happens. It should get stuck. I think the crane's pretty hefty. Oh, yeah. It just smashed my roof into the ceiling of the tunnel. Nice. Well, this guy is completely ruined. But there is another truck that I want to specifically take a look at that isn't really the best suited for this location. In fact, it's best suited at a racetrack. So, let's go ahead and make our way over to a racetrack. And the automation test track should be good for this. And we came all the way to this racetrack to take a look at the 4x2 drift truck. And again, 4x2 means four wheels and the back two are driven. And the funny thing about this is the paint design. It has a AE86 from Initial D styled design on it. it even has the Japanese text on it. And one thing you're definitely going to want to do to make this drift better is lock the differential. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you'll have one of the wheels kind of pop into the air a little bit. And you'll have no power going to the road and you just slow down so fast you can't really drift. With the locked differential you can actually put the power down no matter what and really let it slide about some. And I'll tell you now, this is not a great drift vehicle. But the fact that a big old truck like this can even drift at all is impressive. We only need to go about 50 to 60 miles per hour and that's more than enough for a drift. Because the other thing is, it's not going to go very fast in a straight line. It does have a special six-speed transmission made for sport driving, like drifting. Nice, easy drift here. And then here's the big drift. We got that really tight hairpin corner. Coming in great. Oh, what? 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 The engine just died? What happened? Oh, that's just wrong. I was doing that perfect, and the engine just died on me. You can tell I freaked out trying to turn it back on because I hit the... I like tried to smash V and I hit camera instead. Oh, that really ruined it. Like that was a really nice entry for that drift. Well, here's the thing. Really good drifters, they tap and their body panels come off. So have a tap. Ha ha! There's a body panel that came off. Drifters don't normally tear their doors off. I'm on another level. I just tore my door off because I did not mean to go through those trees. There's what it looks like, by the way. But I did not mean to go through those trees. I was actually trying to like tap a tree with my rear bumper. I don't really have a bumper, so I don't know what I was thinking there. So I guess in the end, it worked out pretty well. So that's the drift version. We'll do a little bit more drifting with it. Because it still drives perfectly fine, even after those two impacts. So we're only going about 30 miles per hour here. Much slower speed for the drift. But actually, you can drift at those speeds. It works perfectly fine to do drifts at very low speeds. Which is really nice, because again, it doesn't have that high of a top speed. Here's a little fun thing we can do, like a little 180 maneuver, park it. Oh, that was beautiful. Can't finish better than that. So now we're going to go on to Leap of Death, and it's time to chuck this thing. And for Leap of Death, we got to use the biggest, baddest option there is. Time for the 8x8 off-road dumper. And then we can dump as we fly through the air if we want to. I don't know why I would do that, but we could. On um, to get some traction going. Lock them differentials, turn on them transfer cases, and now we're moving. We also got some extra ground clearance, which makes it easier to go over the jump. And we're going a surprising 45 miles per hour. That thing was moving. And here comes the big impact. This is going to be a really big one. So 16 times slow-mo is the minimum. I might even hop it up to 100 times when the impact actually happens. Yeah, let's go 100 times here. And then the camera's probably going to freak out, so I'm going to manually locate the camera in the perfect angle to really watch the cab get crushed. There goes the cab, and then there is the rest of the truck getting crushed as well. And now we just have a dozen wheels flying all over the place as they have all become detached from the vehicle. 
And look at the scroll bar at the thing for parts that are broken. It was just this massive bar of things like, I'm broken, I'm broken, I'm broken in every which way possible. So we have completely destroyed it with just one impact. That's all it took. There's a little bit of glitchiness going on, but overall it held up pretty well for how big of a thing it is and how many parts there are. I am very, very happy with that. Now we'll let it get to the very bottom. And it almost looks like it was flying for a second there. That was kind of funny. It's like the way it's floating down, it has a lot of forward momentum, I guess. I guess because it's so heavy, it takes a lot to really lose that forward momentum. Anyways, until next time, this is MyBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I don't know. I can tell by counting the number of wheels on the truck. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time as you guys have a bonus fall. That's only as long as 20 seconds because that's when the thing ends for the little cards for you to click on the next video. That's why the videos always have those extra 20 seconds, by the way. It's because usually on most platforms, there are little things like, look at this video, look at that video. I don't know if it supports all platforms, though. Also, I talked through it. The whole point is I'm not supposed to talk through it. I have failed. <laughs>